that every time you take a loss, humility just like takes over you. You know, the market humbles you, but you need that humility to feed your ego. Ego is good, but it's hard to feed your ego without also having the humility that the market provides you. So every time you take a loss, it's almost like you're just taking that energy and fueling it back. Like, how can I be better next time? What's up, brother? Lots of interesting points within the conversation. I'd love to get your two cents. Wow, what's going on, kid? M7, Taylor, everybody, man. I see so much love up here, man. So many great traders. I've been dying to get back up here with you, man. You know, I've just been listening in the background the last few weeks, but, man, really love what y'all got going on. Um, Captain Matthew was on earlier. I just want to say thank you for your service. My father served in the Army and uh, have a lot of respect for you guys. Right on, brother. Right on. We're, uh, how's your day? How's your week? Um, did you trade much? What'd you trade? Yeah, man. So um, I'm kind of like taking a step back and doing this um, competition right now, this uh, uh, trading uh, challenge competition with this prop firm that deals uh, mainly in stocks. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is um, I was on a space a few weeks ago with Paladin. Um, you guys should be familiar with him. Um, pretty big figure on here. Um, I asked Paladin a question. I asked him, why in the hell would he even consider doing an Iron Man at the time in his life that he did? If you remember his story, if anybody knows anything about his story, he had ended up uh, doing a competing in an Iron Man competition um, during a, a part of his life, which he was in a crossroads where things really weren't looking up for him and uh, he just needed a win. And Paladin said that he did the Iron Man 100% for his ego, 100% just for his ego. And after that, he was able to start to gain some traction with his trading, gain some confidence, but he really needed the win for his ego. And over the last few months, you know, I just look at um, some of my trading um, going in and out of passing challenges and blowing accounts and um, doing well, making money on my personal account and then losing money on some other accounts. And you just go in and out, in and out, in and out. And my ego just took this crazy hit. You know what I'm saying? Just the market just humbling me all the time. And when you think about it, every time you take a loss, humility just like takes over you. You know, the market humbles you, but you need that humility to feed your ego. Ego is good, but it's hard to feed your ego without also having the humility that the market provides you. So every time you take a loss, it's almost like you're just taking that energy and feeling it back. Like, how can I be better next time? Um, I was just reading some stuff around the whole idea of uh, building up your ego. And there was this article that said, like, the ego prevents us from acting on our basic urges but it also works to achieve a balance within our morale. Um, and it also went on to say that, you know, people who have a high ego or a healthy ego tend to be confident dealing with challenges and um, they're good at coming up with solutions to problems, all the things that we as traders need to have in order to be successful traders long term. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. That's, 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 100% why I'm doing this competition because I'm like, man, I need something to stroke my ego, man. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm posting my results every day, win or lose, good or bad, and I'm just, I'm feeding my ego, but I'm also like, can I, can I sit down? Can I sit on my trades? Can I sit and respect my stop loss? Can I respect my targets? Can I just allow it to play out? Um, uh, allow my experiences and, and how the market has humbled me in the past to use that as fuel to my fire to do well. So, that's that's what I'm up to, Kit. Damn, I like that, bro. I like that. That's that's fire, bro. That's fire. It's my boy FX21. We got Joe G here, Billy Sullix. Uh, that competition. That's interesting, bro. I think as a trader, I don't know. I think competition with yourself is uh is awesome. 
and uh, I really like your reasoning and justification for wanting to do it. So, so yeah, man, I think that's cool. I think that's cool that you're doing it. Yeah, I'll also also want to say this. Like, um, it's crazy. You know, um, a lot of people say that if you've been in the game, like it, it takes you at least two to three years to become consistently profitable. I've been in this game eight years. I was a loser until 2021. 2021 is I made my first I had my first net profitable year 2021 and I thought I was going to be a rock star. And then 2022 hit me like a brick wall. And 2023 has been I started off great in 2023, you know, got the FTMO 200k. Uh, my man Rich Kwan is telling me, "Yo, <laughs> yo 21 hit hit that hit that profit split button." I literally posted the profit, the live, the profit from the live account and Rich Kwan, y'all can go back in the history. Rich Kwan said, hit the button to, to secure the refund and to make it, make this a, a live account where you've gotten the refund from. And I did not do that. I went on a losing streak. I ended up losing the next 13 of the next trades and I blew that 200 K account. So that humbled me. That's one of the things that humbled me earlier this year. So I've just been climbing back. Um, but with this competition, it's it's trading stocks, and I, I've traded everything from crypto to penny stocks. Um, Forex was really big, of course. I was trading Nasdaq to indices uh, with the uh, CFD um, MT4 brokers, and uh, you know I had to like sit back and trade in this competition where it's trading stocks. I'm like, okay, this is a different game. You know, I'm just you know, we typically like to trade algorithmically when we're trading indices um, or Forex. And in the stock market, if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, man, they could just just run and forget all that algorithmic shit. You know what I'm saying? They could just, you know, catch a, you know, a first green day or a high percent gainer or, you know what I mean? And just and just run with it. So I noticed that um, a couple of days into the competition that there was some people like like uh, this is one trade is a Pakistani trade is number one right now. Pakistan. Shut, yo, stand up, Pakistan. Like y'all got some crazy traders out there. But um, but he was coming with it. I said, you know what? I gotta dust off my scanner. I gotta dust. I gotta dust off my stock scanner. So this morning, I played this this stock that was up on earnings. They had earnings yesterday, and it was up ARFM. Um, it was up on a day. It broke a key level, and I was in on it. Rolled that to um a, a, a supply zone above the market. Took profits and tried to to play the back side of it algorithmically, like waiting for a, a breaking structure to the downside and a retracement to try to get that. 50% entry and I tried to scalp it. I got a little bit on it and um, I feel really good, you know? So um, I need that. I need that. Like it's just little things like that. Just make me feel like, okay, yeah, I could do this. And and coming into next week, I'm like, I can really sit down on my trade. So uh, it's, it's just a journey. And uh, one last thing I want to say, I want to encourage everybody to post their journey, post your charts, post your trades, post, post your losses, your wins and everything. Don't let nobody make you feel like, you're not like you don't matter or like you're not good enough to post your post your stuff. And don't be afraid of the criticisms or cynicisms that people have, because as long as I've been in this, people always like, you know, people people will troll me because they literally they literally think that I was ever bragging or whatever. I don't brag, but I can see how it can come across that way just because it's just how I talk. Like, that's how I that's what I do when I when I win. I post music videos and 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 rap songs and i love it that's what i do but look the market has humbled me you can't humble me the market has humbled me you can never humble me so y'all need to have that mindset where y'all feel free to post your thoughts because this is how we learn from everybody i was in the lab with rich kwan he was telling me to journal more i was in the lab the last four weeks with claudia ray she helped me refine my process with supply and demand I've been in the lab with Dave Teaches, DTFX, and the whole DTFX crew, and he's trading on the the, the sub minute time frames, five seconds, and all of that. And big shout out to Stoic Trader because I watched this guy's market structure video every single day this week. I'm telling you, that is not no lie. He has the best market structure video I've ever seen in my life. It's your main man, the undisputed, the undefeated, the notorious. Brandon FX21, much love to Kit and the crew. My man, if you're trading stocks, just a little quick heads up. Half standard, two standards on that gap. Check it. Check it out. Gap trading with an SD. Some BDE up in here. Just saying.